Hey guys, this is Mac again on behalf of Strongside Tactical. Got a quick review of an exciting item coming at you today from StrongSideTactical.com. This is the JP Easy Trigger. Now, JP rifles are widely known for how much they uh, support the competitive sports and really put out top-notch products for AR-15 rifles. And this trigger is no different. So for a long time, if you've been looking into AR-15 triggers and you really want to upgrade uh, that part of your rifle, uh, you see names in triggers such as JP being right up at the top of the list in popularity and also um, reputation. Um, JP triggers are usually adjustable and also fairly technical to install yourself. And that is actually uh, the purpose of the JP Easy Trigger. Uh, this is a trigger that you can install uh, fairly quickly at your home by yourself if you have a little bit of technical know-how and know your way around the AR-15 rifle. Now to make that much easier, uh, JP has included an instructional DVD with John Paul in, uh, installing this trigger on an AR-15 rifle. Go step by step, you can for fast forward and rewind the video, uh, really, really helpful. Also very easy to understand and very easy to read uh, instruction manual that uh, has pictures in it. Uh, there's really almost no way that you can mess this up if you follow the directions. So. Um, Let's put this in our three-gun rifle. Uh, this is the tank rifle that I have been building using parts from StrongSideTactical.com. As you can see, it's pretty much uh, completely finished. And uh, now we're just putting the fine-tuning touches on it, and, uh, including putting this amazing JP Easy Trigger in this rifle. Um, so let's do this step by step. Um, I actually already went in and installed this into this rifle. It was really easy. I did it in about 30 minutes uh, one afternoon and uh, really didn't need any fancy tools or anything. Um, I did need a screwdriver to take my pistol grip off and then actually the JP kit includes all of the Allen wrenches that you need uh, to fine tune and install this uh, kit. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out here is that, um, as you'll see me in the video, um, it does come with two trigger spr or two hammer springs, excuse me. Um, the uh, popular JP Yellow hammer spring, which is about a three and a half pound uh, spring, and that's going to give that trigger a nice, light, and very quick, uh, repeatable pull. However, they do give you the warning in the instruction manual that um, if you use the yellow spring there may uh, tend to be some reliability issues with light strikes on hard military primers. And because I'm a competitive shooter and I absolutely need this trigger to go bang every time I pull it, um, I opted for the red trigger spring, which is about three and a half to four pounds, maybe four and a half pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. And it's gonna be 100% reliable with any type of M193 or uh, hard military primer to ammo. And I do occasionally shoot that uh, in competition, so that's why I opted for the red hammer spring. So um, you'll have that decision to make. Um, if you want super light, uh, go with the yellow spring. If you want super reliable, um, go with the red spring. So let's put this trigger in real quick and then uh, let's put this thing to the test. Um, I really love how this thing feels. I'll go ahead and just give you that disclaimer right up front. Um, I don't think there's a better trigger that I could have chosen to put in this rifle. You could pick it up at strongsidetactical.com. Let's get it in. First thing I've done to install this trigger was remove my old trigger group and the safety. As you can see, to remove the safety, you are required to remove the pistol grip from the lower. Now the JP Easy Trigger comes packaged in a really nice sturdy package along with the instructions that I referenced before which are very easy to understand, uh, very well narrated and they have nice pictures as well. Here are the two hammer springs that I referenced earlier that you'll choose from either the yellow or the red depending on the trigger pull weight that you desire. First uh, you need to install the trigger spring and this was a little bit challenging. Um, but finally I did get it with a little bit of elbow grease and you want to make sure that this is installed correctly by making sure um, that the um, wire bar goes across the front of the trigger 
and that the two legs are pointed forward. Just as so. Next up you'll want to put either the yellow or the red hammer spring on the JP hammer. Um, this is a little bit easier because you don't have the trigger in the way. So these just pop right into place. Once again, paying attention to which way um, the, the uh, wire bar and the legs are positioned. And I just referenced the pictures in the instructions to make sure I had this correct. Now next, um, you'll want to part uh, of the way assemble the safety. Now this is a really nice safety. It actually reminds me a lot of a uh, battle arm safety. And that JP includes a safety with this trigger because this is a sort of a um, safety, uh, safety mechanism for the trigger. There's a locking screw in it that's going to keep this trigger from moving around and malfunctioning on you. So what JP wants you to do first of all is it to install uh, the trigger selector actually on the opposite side of the rifle temporarily and then to temporarily install uh, this Allen screw into um, the uh, left side of the lower which is typically where your selector switch would be. Now you're going to switch these at the end of the installation into their proper locations but this just allows you to work with the safety as you install the trigger. Now here I'm just uh, sort of function checking this safety to make sure that it moves appropriately and stops where it should. And I've also installed the pistol grip back onto the lower to make sure that I can function the safety. Then I'll just drop the uh, trigger right down into the appropriate position, making sure that the legs of the spring are oriented in the correct position. And then I start installing uh, the locking pin that goes through the disconnector and the trigger. Now these pins from JP are some of the most high quality um, locking pins that you can get. The thing that I really like about them is that um, they're secured into place with a very, very small Allen screw once you get them installed. And these things, um, I think, are superior to even uh, some of the other locking pins like the K&S pins on the market. And they're very low profile and they just really look really nice on your lower. So, if for no other reason, I believe that this trigger is worth getting just for these awesome locking pins that you get with them. Here you can see me uh, finally uh, installing the locking uh, allen screw right into the trigger pin. So this trigger and disconnector is now installed and now I need to install the hammer. Now installing the hammer is the most difficult part of a three-piece trigger installation on AR-15. You do have to uh, put tension on the hammer spring by putting the legs in the appropriate slots on the trigger pin and then you have to rock the hammer backwards into its cocked position as you drive the uh, locking pin through the hammer. Um, so it takes a little while if you're working by yourself. If you have an extra hand or a buddy that can help you, that's always a help. But I have found the easiest way for me to do it here is to get it into position, then lay the lower down flat and hold it with my left hand with my thumb as I drive the pin through. And you can even sometimes use a roll pin or a slave pin to help you out. Um, so what I did was I used an old um, pin from my stock trigger as a slave pin and then I drove it out. Here I'm just uh, putting the uh, Allen screw uh, into the pin to lock it into place. Now here you can see the final product of the trigger, disconnector, and hammer. Um, all three pieces in appropriate position um, and now um, comes the adjustment of the trigger and this will be the most time-consuming part of this trigger uh, installation. As you can see the way it comes from the factory the trigger will not release the hammer and always as an aside make sure that when you're function checking a trigger like this that you don't let the hammer strike the uh, bolt catch because it will shatter that part. Now JP does uh, provide you with the appropriate uh, allen wrenches to adjust this trigger and here I'm adjusting the disconnector um, and this is a time-consuming process um, what you're going to want to do is you have to adjust the disconnector just until it barely captures the hammer and then releases it when you let go of the trigger so the trick that I found after watching the DVD was to screw the, the screw all the way down and then back it out slowly until it released the hammer 
And then once I got it into the appropriate position, I used the red Loctite to uh, lock it down. And that way, this trigger is not gonna malfunction on me and these uh, screws are not gonna move once I get them into the appropriate position. Now you can see me adjusting the over travel stop. And there really is less science involved with adjusting this screw. Basically what I did was I took another AR-15 rifle of mine with a different single stage trigger and I just familiarized myself with how the over travel felt and then I just tried to make this trigger feel as much of the same as possible. And again, once I got it into the position that I liked, I used red Loctite. Now you'll use a different Allen screw to adjust this safety. So there is a locking screw that goes into the top of the safety inside the rifle um, that keeps the trigger from moving. And there really is no adjustment to this. You basically just need to put red Loctite on it and screw it down. Now you can see me checking the safety to make sure that it's actually functional. Um, as I put it into the safe position and pull the trigger, the hammer does not release. And when I put it into the fire position, the hammer does release. And this trigger works 100% correctly and 100% uh, and safely. Now I'm just moving the selector switch over to the opposite side, screwing the brass detent into the safety. This prevents the uh, locking screw from moving that holds the safety in place. So this really is an ingenious system by JP here. Um, they have safety mechanisms for every moving part inside the safety to prevent it from failing and moving around in the lower. And the last uh, part of this installation, I just move the selector switch over to the left side of the rifle. And now this trigger is installed. And as one last safety check, I'm gonna go through and completely function check the trigger just to make sure that everything's working right. And now the fun begins. Now I get to see just how awesome this trigger feels. Of course, you do need to lube your trigger appropriately before you go out and use it. So. I'm just using some EWL grease here to lube all the contact points and all the moving parts inside the trigger mechanism. And as a final installation, let's just put lower and upper back together. And now we're done, it's time to go shoot. So installation of the trigger group is just that easy. It took me about 30 minutes to do this. I did use the DVD and as well as the written instruction to take my time to make sure that I got this exactly right. If there's one part that you want to install absolutely correctly on your AR-15 rifle, it's the trigger group. Uh, number one, for safety reasons, but also for legal reasons. Um, this needs to remain a reliable semi-automatic rifle. So, if you don't feel comfortable installing this part in your rifle, then take it to a qualified gunsmith to make sure that everything's done 100% correctly. Um, and for you experienced gunsmiths uh, of your own, do this at home and do it with confidence. You can find this trigger at strongsidetactical.com as well as many of the custom parts that you see installed on my rifle here. Um, if you like this video and others like it, please send a like rating for the video and as always subscribe to the strongsidetactical.com channel. As always, this is Mac with another informative review and uh, we'll see you next time.